Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I are playing the Delta Green role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is The Volume of Secret Faces. It was written by Dennis Detweiler, and it's part of The Impossible Landscapes. Uh, it is available from Art Dream Publishing. Our handler is Nathan Decker, and this is episode four. Our recap will be given by me as my character, Agent Dust. But before we begin, we have a new patron. Brandon D. has pledged $5 a month to our club. Thank you so much, Brandon. I would also like to thank all of our patrons and let them know how much we appreciate their support. Uh, we are putting together four shows a week, averaging two hours each. We are very fortunate to have so many talented members. Uh, we don't monetize our shows, uh, so we get nothing from YouTube. So the show is yours. Thank you. Uh, thanks for all of your help. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. <clears throat> oh. Oh, I don't know how I keep getting mixed up in this shit. <sighs> crazy agents, crazy business. Seems these guys were exposed to something akin to a hyperdimensional virus, and they tried to infect me. It's a weird thing, a sigil. Uh, just some shapes on a book cover, The King in Yellow. A play that I refuse to read, especially after I've seen what it's done to these guys. I'm utilizing everything that my teacher has taught me. How to focus the mind, quiet the invaders. And I see, I, I keep distracting myself with the thoughts of Dale back home. The agents have told me some wacky stuff. They are convinced that traditional demons, are descri as described in the Ars Goetia, are real, and they have actually been assisting them in their investigations. Sounds like rubbish, but I'll keep an open mind. This mission is a name game. Lots of anagrams and shit. It's all I can do to keep the information straight. Some of the agents went missing at the Dorchester house, the psychiatric facility, by all accounts, they just vanished. This may tie into what the agents have been talking about, uh, the night floors on the McAllister building. <sighs> Agent Dante is uh, currently staking out the room where we suspect the night window might be located. Uh, he is the one who exposed me to the virus, and I think he is mostly nuts already. I should pity the asshole, but he's kind of pissed me off, and I hope he gets sucked into another dimension. I think the only agent that is of use to me is Dent. Well, we got into the FBI database, and we gleaned a bunch of information. Uh, he even scored some tasers. The Brotherhood of Doors probably got involved with some of the proverbial uh, hyperdimensional geometry and opened a gate or gates. Who can say? Supposedly, it all revolves around some book. I thought it was the King in Yellow, but I'm not so sure now. Could be something else. Have to keep my eyes open for that. Anyway, I'm staking out uh, Elias Barbas, i.e. Ray Bilibas, i.e. Agent Exeter's house. I intend on getting a closer look and see if there's anything I can glean from there. These agents like to be hands-on, which I have no problem with at all. Uh, these documents and things give me some concern. Some have said that the pen is mightier than the sword. Maybe in this case, it's deadlier than the plague. To be the most effective I can be, to use what I've learned, I have to think mostly of myself in this dangerous place and hope that I can get away in the end mostly unscathed. All right, thank you, Tom. Well, it sounds like we currently have two groups of folks that are not on a hotel floor writhing in pain, so let's start with them. Uh, Agent Dust and Agent Deanna, you are driving to this neighborhood of Medford, and Agent Dent, uh, I believe you are standing guard while Agent Donnelly gets some much-needed rest. And you had just gotten this text of a picture 
of this horrible baby face with something writhing behind it. And you had sent out a warning. And your phone is quiet. Until about 20 seconds later, there is a another text from Agent Dante. It is a video. Jesus Christ, what the hell's going on over there? Yeah, I have no idea. You saw that thing, though, right? In the picture? Yeah. Uh... Ah, uh, shit. What should it we is... do? We're already here. We can't just no. drive back and help them, right? So, I also get the video as well? Mm -hmm. Yep, you all get the video and, and is this know... before or after we hear him screaming do we hear him screaming uh, you have not heard him screaming as, oh, as not far yet. as you know this is just another message from his phone oh okay, okay. all right okay. what's he saying if you open the video so you're kind of in the dark car it's starting to rain outside you can hear it at the hotel and there is a video it starts outside on a street and it appears to be daylight although the light is fading and you see a man walk into the camera frame it is michael whitworth you recognize this dea agent from the files that you saw but he is obviously harried he has deep bags under his eyes he looks like he's dropped a few pounds and he just calmly stands, adjusts himself as he's looking into the camera on this street. You see there's some people milling behind as his expression changes. As it turns to this look of fear. And he steps back, looking at something behind the camera, perhaps and races down the street, knocking into someone, pushing them a bit into the road. They shout and look at him as he runs past, and he turns a corner. And the, the Before, phone is still just laying there? It's still, yep, the phone is just fixed almost. He then walks back into frame and adjusts his outfit and appears to start the same loop before the video stops. Agent Diana, can you do an alertness roll? Huh? A success? Eight. Okay. You recognize the people that he ran into. In fact, you might even recognize the street. It looks like your husband, Mark, and your son, Kenneth. Yeah. Um, after Diana sees that, uh, Dust would see that her eyes uh, go wide. Driving, so. Oh, okay. What's wrong? You're you're narrating it to me. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I I recognize uh, people that I know uh, in this video. Um, who? <clears throat> my my family. Uh, uh, okay, it's got to be some sort of illusion or, or delusion because the, the phone should be with with Agent uh, Dante. Why why are we seeing something? And it's nighttime, so it must be something else. What's the, what's the date on the on the video? What's the time and the date? It looks like it was from tonight. That's impossible. And uh, and it looks like the video was taken in daylight, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's just turned dark here, so maybe in LA. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that. I don't know. Like you see, uh, Diana just doesn't want to look at the video anymore. You said it that just, it's not moving either, so did did Agent Dante drop it through some 
hole in space and time? I I don't know. Um, that would that would make a lot more sense, maybe. To so last time them. we checked, he just sent the picture of the baby face, and then a yes. couple minutes later, set twenty seconds later, he sends the video. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna text. Where did you get this? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> and if he doesn't respond, then you get a text back that says "Come and see," and that's where we will cut back to a hotel room and we can see having staggered out of the closet yeah i believe screaming in pain uh, <laughs> ruining the carpeting and bed sheet with a uh just train wreck of an arm at this point the skin is hanging off and flaps uh agent dante what are you doing you do still have your personal phone yeah, I am um I'm leaving this room. Um Agent Dante has some struggles with fugue states. Um so I think Agent Dante is gonna be like, I need help. He's gonna open the door back out into the hallway and will most likely come to at a hospital. All right. So you're just kind of running down the hallway until you collapse. Yeah, screaming in agony, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Then we will watch. There's blood prints on the wall as you collapse. Maybe, you know, to an outside, you're fading away. You do see some people running up to you. It appears they've heard, and you're going unconscious. And uh, we'll jump back to Dust and Diana, actually, as they are pulling up to 919 oh what's the full address it's in medford everybody knows it yeah Yeah. Um, 919 fourth street medford massachusetts diana do you want to go back um if you want you can drive back see if everything's okay i'll stay here and uh i'll catch a cab or a bus Actually, how far is it from, uh, like, realistically? Like, if I were able to, yeah, yeah, I don't know how far it is. Um, Medford, I believe, is kind of on the outskirts. So it took us 30 minutes to drive here? Yeah, we'll say that. Yeah, I mean, you could even go and come back, get me. Uh, I don't know. I don't feel, I don't feel safe in leaving you. Who knows? It's just a house. I mean, does it look like somebody's inside or does it look abandoned? Yeah. So, yeah, Yeah. when you pull up, you do see the house and the rain's starting to come down a little bit. And it is interesting because you are very clearly in a suburban area. You can see nicely manicured lawns, two-story houses here and there, lots of stuff that makes you think, ah, families live here, right? There's kids stuff in the lawns of these. Sure. And when you get in front of the two-story rust-red bungalow that is 919, it stands apart because there are no lights on and the lawn is clearly overgrown. This has not been tended to for months at this point. Yeah, I can I can get in and get out and see if there's anything there and just bring it back. Uh, do, you ha- are, are, do you have anything... Um... Are you armed? Oh, uh, I think I am. I armed? Uh, Probably have a taser. At least a taser. Yeah, I have you a taser. definitely have. I have a taser. taser. I also have a tote that I'm carrying so that I can keep my stuff in the tote, and uh, so I can carry stuff out if I find any paperwork. Or I think I'll be fine. I'm pretty pretty sneaky. Uh. I don't know. It's just looking at this house. I don't think it sh- I should not uh, leave you here out. Okay, you don't have to. But but what's his name? Seem to be in far more distress. You've you've got more of a connection to him though, don't you, than to me? I mean, I'm a seasoned uh, D- DG operative. I can handle myself. 
Well, I'm confident that whatever he is going through, I think he'll pull through whatsoever. You know, the All attitude right. of pull yourself through your, with your bootstraps type of deal. All right. Well, it looks like we're going to have to break in. So <laughs> we'll have to be sneaky and it's wet. Mm-hmm. And it is early enough in the night. You do see that there are neighboring houses that all have lights on at the moment. You can see figures moving around, but it doesn't look like there is a car in the driveway of 919. What, what are you wearing, Agent Diana? I'll if say ca- in... oh, just uh, just casual wear, just quite the. Uh... Color. Um, I'm a, I'm in dark colors, so I mean, she'll at least have like a, a taco trail Um, uh, at least a black coat on. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Gloves. Do you want to come in with me? Do you want to wait here? I'll go in with you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we find anything, most likely I won't know what it is, but most likely you will. So. Uh, to give you an impression of this house, it is, like I said, a two-story bungalow type thing. It has a large front porch that would probably lead into a living room uh, with a door there. There is also, you can see, a walkway around it. The driveway goes up next to, we'll say, the left side of it. And you think there's probably a, a kitchen entrance in the back, as well as windows all over the place. You said it's predominantly red in color? It is predominantly red, a rust red. Okay. Let's um let's park a little ways down here mm-hmm. and then walk up. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Would the two of you give me stealth rolls. Ah. Uh, oh, over. Seven. Seventy over sixty. Seven out of twenty. Wow. Okay. You are walking up in the street and it is about that time when you see the back door of the house uh, next, like kind of behind this one, Uh open up and it catches you just as you're walking towards the front and there is uh, an older woman there looks like she's taking out some trash but she very clearly clocks you just the perfect wrong time okay um i'll i'll look over at her and i'll go uh hello um we're looking for uh yeah what's his real name uh Uh, elias barbas we're, lo- we're looking for Mr. Barbus. He's actually my uncle. He's she, been missing for a while. She throws the trash down and walks over. He's your uncle. Well, you should get yourself checked for mental health because your uncle has been terrorizing this neighborhood. Oh, dear. Oh dear. Yes. Uh, he has a history of mental problems. Well, what I'll sort say- of things has he been doing? Well, he's not keeping up his lawn, first of all. Yeah, and I, I, I actually all, was going to mow the lawn, except that it's raining. Yeah, it, it, at night, please. We're having dinner here. Oh, I'm not going to mow it now. No, it, it's it's okay, raining. Yeah. But I, I came uh-huh. to check on him, and I haven't seen him. Yeah, well, you, you know, if you tell him, tell him to keep up the lawn maybe get his uh, electrical bill paid because it doesn't look good. My property values are not going to go up because of this. I will have you know. And you can tell that woman of his to put on some damn clothes in front of the window. There are children in this area. I nearly lost my teeth when I saw her parade past the window. I'll have you know. I, I do apologize. Um, we're thinking about putting him in a home. Yeah, I think you should. A home not here. Well, I apologize, and we'll, we're, we're taking care of the problem. Thank you very yeah. much. When was yeah. the last time you actually saw him? Oh, he's here most nights making a ruckus. What type of ruckus? 
I don't know. It's engines, that kind of thing. Maybe he's into motorcycling. I don't know why he decides he has to do it at night when we're trying to sleep. But uh, I'm glad you're going to talk to him. I'll tell you that much for sure. Well, this should be the last time that anything like that happens. Yeah, see that it is. What was your name, miss? Uh, I'm Ruby. Ruby. I I apologize, Ruby. Yeah. Don't, Don't worry. We'll take care of it, Ruby. Yeah, good. And she does like a, an eye roll and walks back, but she closes the door and you see the little blinds of her back window push aside. Yeah, like she maybe she's watch. keeping it. Yeah, she wants to watch. We are under under expert surveillance right now. So, uh, yes, she likes to watch. I can see. All right, well, let's, let's go meet our uncle, as you call him. That's, that's all I can think of at the, at the moment. <laughs> I uh, I hope she didn't notice that I'm not black. <laughs> she thought yeah. about it, but then she went, well, but you know what? Uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Who can say? Uh, Ruby, does, Ruby t- tries to keep up with the times. You understand. Yeah. So we'll we'll go up to the front. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. What's, is there anything on the porch that gives oh, us... I'm glad you asked. There is indeed a veritable mountain of mail sitting outside the front door. It is waterlogged and deteriorating. It's yeah. pretty terrible. I'll take it up, shake it off, and I'll put it in my tote. Okay. Take a look at this yeah. later. Yeah, perfect. Is You know you'll have to look through it, but you do see that there are multiple past due notices junk mail just really everything in here i don't think he's been here for a while what do you think about this naked woman walking around uh i don't know uh that could be some other visitors visitor no he's she says naked woman and noises at night the whole connection to the dark is once again it could allude to a lot of things. Uh, and we're here at the dark, so. Maybe we'll find that we were not supposed to see. I'm going to try the door. Uh, shockingly, it is locked. And mm. it appears to not have been opened in quite a while. Okay. Um, You stay here. I'll go around to the back and see if the back door is locked. Okay. Let me see if I can try to open it. Yeah, let me see if you can try to open it. Yeah, that would... so I'll I'll quickly go around yep. to the back. Yep, and the back porch kind of has you can see there's a kitchen area behind uh, there. You can see there are mechanical parts littering the back stoop, just discarded. They're all the stained metal, and yeah, if you give that door a try, you see it is also locked, but can I... it appears to be more frequently used. Can I see if I can identify whether they're car parts or? Um, do you have a engineering? Engineering. Of uh, some kind. There is no engineering. Gonna, Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Something uh, along those lines. Heavy machinery. I've got, I've got a little bit of heavy machinery. I probably won't be able to. I got 25 out of 10, so no. Okay. Uh, tough to say. Yeah, you think there might be a part, like you see a headlight here, but there's yeah. also gears and other sort of things that you're not quite yeah, able to place mean, where it comes car from. Parts. Yeah. Something um, that I'll assume. So I'll yeah, try the it, back door as well. Yeah, that one is also locked. Agent Diana, how are you getting in the front door exactly? Either uh, I um. I don't know, force, <laughs> some okay. type, just brute. Um, I don't know if that would be a strength or yeah, do a unarmed. Strength. Okay. Yep. Yes, why not? Just put brute your force. shoulder into it. Yeah. Oh, that's a success. All right. Not okay. a critical? Uh, it's a 38, no. Okay. Uh, the door cracks open. You can okay. very clearly see. Yeah, you can hear that in the back. <laughs> Uh, you can clearly see like the wood frame has splintered a bit here and 
Agent Diana, you walk or well, you can see into this room. I won't tell you if you walk in or not, but it is a graveyard of machinery. There are stacks and stacks of mechanical parts stood up. There are buckets that appear to be filled with what you think is probably oil. There are workbenches, work tools, and these strange contraptions that appear to be half built here and there uh, around this room. Yeah. Can't you see the back door from where she is. Um, or are we, am I in another room? Or room? is it possible for me like to shine the light? I'll have a flashlight of some sort if uh, Agent Dust can see me. Yes, I believe you can see. You see it kind of goes through the dining room but and then the kitchen, but you can see it from there. Yeah. yeah I'm going to, if I can, just beeline over to the back door just to let uh, Agent Dust in. Okay. Yeah, it's it's kind of a interesting angle. Let you're, me. You're, you're a real share. brute, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's come. It's it's part of the job. Yep. So to give you a visual idea, so take a quick uh, screen grab or something. Uh, the leftmost picture is the first floor. Uh, Agent Diana, you entered in that middle area down there, so you see the stairwell up as well as doors to your, or kind of areas to your left and right that appear to be the living room, then a mm -hmm. dining room, and then in the far back, a kitchen. So I, I guess the angle's a little funky for can you see each other, but you definitely heard it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, brute force to go through the door, but going over like the buckets of like uh, oil and stuff, but Oh man. What is going on in here? <sighs> so, uh, Agent Dust, you've gone around and you're following I, in. I was assuming that she would come to the back door and open it for me. Okay. Yeah, that's what was, yeah. I it's was probably got a glass see. door in it, a glass window. She yes. Yes. Yeah, she definitely can. She walks through the dining room into there and the kitchen as well. You can see there are buckets just sitting up on counters of oil and you can smell all of this it has a very very workman kind of feel to it yeah motor oil you're walking through yeah it uh you won't forget this place he's he's been building something or inventing something or i mean there's there's parts all over the backyard too yeah building what though and the god the smell and why would why and why would uh a woman be in in this uh place anyway I don't naked know. no less with all buckets of oil everywhere um mm -hmm. let's uh well let's let's start looking around you go that way i'll go this way see if there's any paper or any books. blue blueprints right. even yeah we're yeah. looking for aren't we looking for some weird book we were yeah. warned not to look in. Is there a library in this place? Yeah. Um, you're not seeing a library. Uh, maybe one of those rooms has some shelving that could have once been used for it, but you're mm -hmm. not seeing it in there. It's kind of been changed into this large work room at the start of the house. Uh, and I'm assuming at this point, yeah, you're you have flashlights and you're looking around because there is no power here. So you just have these lights just kind right. of flashing along. And I will say, let's see. So you're starting to look around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first thing you notice in the back area, kind of the upper left of the house, there is a room that looks like it was being used for maybe some kind of plaster work. There is a smashed apart mold there. But uh, it is difficult to immediately tell what exactly it would have looked like. Like a plaster mold for molding on the ceiling or? Um, more like to make a sculpture of some kind. To make a sculpture. Yeah, oh, so like okay. you could put it together and you could kind of figure out the shape of what it was, but it would take a while. So he's yeah. into art, maybe. Yeah, um... 
how much time would it take for us to put the plaster mold together to get the shape what he's trying to make? Um, probably about a half hour if you oh, had a gut okay. feel. Oh, you can you can bring it with us. Like how I mean, big? How is big it? and heavy is it? Yeah, yeah. it's de- it's not too heavy, but it's uh about two feet tall. It's clunky. So oh, yeah, okay. exactly. It's in parts, so you could pretty easily like load it up in a box and move it if you wanted to. And we're well, all let's, going. Let's see if we can find a cardboard box. We can always take it out and put it in the car when when we're leaving. Yeah, you'll have to dump out some uh, nuts and bolts from it, but you can do that. Okay. And this is just the first floor, right? There's a second floor we still have to figure out. There well, might be a basement as well. Mm-hmm. Do you want to the... go up? I'll go down. Well, before you finish the first floor, there's even more. Oh, oh okay. boy. The, yeah. yes, <laughs> the bathroom that you are uh, is kind of in the corner there on the left-hand side. You see it is stacked with a flood of books that appear to be largely water damaged or hurt. But you could dig through these and maybe find something relevant. Sure, I'll dig. Uh, yeah, you do that. Find the next spot. Yep. Do these look like old books, new books? Uh, some old, some new. It really is truly a, a mix. A lot of... Uh, technical manuals in there as well that you can see have been thumbed through. But the kind of stuff you'd find at a university library or not like some old tome in uh, leather bound. Right, right. You're not seeing the uh, 15th century anything. It's all mechanical. He Uh seems to be obsessed with uh, mechanical engineering. There you... is okay, a turn. yep. Agent Diana then is mm-hmm. your kind of scoping out the rest of the kitchen. You're looking maybe through drawers and things. You find there is a prepaid cell phone in one of the drawers that has a symbol burned into it. You can see like melted the plastic of it. Uh, that is the. The seal's a little di- difficult to make out, but you can s- you think it says Citri, S I T R I. Yeah, um, immediately uh, when Agent Diana finds it, I'm gonna go over to Agent Dust. That you know what this sigil is. Uh, I don't want to see any sigils. Just put it in the put it in the tote, and we'll we'll look at it later. All right. I'm not falling for that bullshit again. Or um. Yeah, well, let's see. But I can, I'm going to look at it. It says what, like what, tree, right? What, what sort of yeah. sigil is it? Uh, like? It looks like a demonic seal. Oh, like one of those things? See, but it's, it looks like it's been stamped into the plastic and melted in. Yeah, okay. That, yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah, if. Something from Ars Goetia. Yeah, I actually would, because I know that one of our agents, like Agent Dent has like a, the book. Um, so yeah, he seems to know a lot about it. I'm actually going to try to text him, saying that we found a pre we found a prepaid uh, cell phone with. Let's uh, keep let's keep looking and uh, text him when we're out of here. I I don't want that uh, woman next door to get all curious. Yeah, let's 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 go fast. Um, you go up, I'll go down. Are we down on this level? Uh, you're still down on this level. Do a search roll. This will this will take a little bit as you're digging through these books. No. Succeeded on my search roll. All right. Uh, I failed. All right. Agent Diana, mm-hmm. you are looking through these books and you find that there is one that kind of jumps out at you. It's a, a slim volume. It looks like it was printed out uh, from a website, but it is titled on the front page the Ars Goetia and it's just covered in pin marks, ink stains oil but it has cribbed right like this looks like someone was actually taking notes on it oh um, yeah you can see Diana slipping this out this uh, this slim volume okay it's an, it's an Ars yeah, but looks like 
Looks like someone's been riding on it. Yep. Linda Tops Tope. It in. Yeah. He's been making notes. Mm -hmm. okay. All these things are wet. Hopefully they haven't all bled together. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. As you're talking in this room, you have this book in your hands. You hear the sound of a car pulling up outside. Fuck. I should be. Oh, yeah. And we're gonna jump to Agent Dent, who you're you're having a quiet night. It sounds like, right? I'm actually trying to text uh, Dante, like, stop fucking around. And I'm not getting any response. Uh, you're not. Okay. At this point, I will most likely call the handler and inform the group that we are changing up burner phones. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah, you call Seth. Is there anything else you need to let him know? Uh, don't look at any videos from any of these numbers. Block them to be safe. And I will reach out to this number from a future burner phone with a code phrase from a past opera that we went on. Okay, great. I'm not fucking around. Yeah, no, I know. It's no, it's good what you're doing. Oh my god. Fine. Whatever. Okay. Good. Great. I'll hang up and Great. I'm going to stand over Don Lee's bed and just murmur to keep you safe. And you get before you, you know, get rid of your uh particular note, you get a ping on the burner. I'll flip over in the phone. And you see it's a picture of Cindy. It's my uh it's my daughter. Is this a new picture? Or an old it one? It does look like a new picture. Yeah, she's at uh she's at college right now, right? Yes, she is. Yeah, you can see her college in the background. It looks like she's hanging out with a few friends. I will slam my phone shut and just step on it. All right. There is a loud crunch in the hotel as your cell phone goes. Do you do anything further? I'll wait until it's turn time for Don Lee to wake up and I'll probably shake him awake at the time. All right. Then we will get back to you as we cut back to Agent Dante, who is coming to in the back of an ambulance that is rolling uh, not as softly as you'd like through the city towards a nearby hospital. There is... Uh, you've got all the, the kind of stuff tied to you. You can see your arm has very clearly been kind of triaged initially just to, to get you into the vehicle. But uh, there is also a person that's very clearly not an EMT there in the back with you, wiping his uh, head with a handkerchief as he looks at you. And uh, kind of turns to empty. Is he? Uh, uh, is he um, fully with it? Is he with it? Uh. Oh yes. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, hello, uh, Mister. Uh, oh, I'm I'm terribly sorry. Uh, oh, oh, that is a uh, that is a tough tough one to. Uh, to reach out with. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Barnes, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name's Robert, uh, Robert Lapidus. Um, I am a, uh, a a lawyer with Keys, Norris, Ingalls, and Grant, uh, and it's it's a pleasure to, to, to meet you. Who? Oh, where am I? Who are you? Uh, I, I'm. My name is Robert Lapidus. I am a uh, a lawyer for Keys, Norris, Ingalls, and Grant. Uh, I, I'm here to see that you're taken care of. Did that kid send you? 
uh, <laughs> a child, uh, a no, sir. Uh, if you're referring, of course, to my client, he is a uh, a, a man at this point. Um, that is, uh, I we don't appreciate that nickname for him. No, we we were sent to make sure you are doing well uh, on on behalf of our of my client. Yes. Oh. Where are we? Well, uh, I've got good news. We're in the back of an ambulance. We are heading towards a hospital. Uh, he names a hospital that you might know is nearby Boston. And he goes, Mass we, General. Uh, Mass General. We have the best plastic surgery reconstruction grafting expert on hand. Uh, they will very easily be able to take this city kind of gives a look at your hand grimaces a little uh well maybe not too easily you understand but uh um yeah we'll uh we'll see that we can't put you back together huh uh-huh. <laughs> yeah but of course there is the matter of um <laughs> it's a it's a little gauche to say but i am a lawyer um there is the matter of payment Do you catch my meaning? Uh, you, of course, you you help a man who's unconscious and then demand payment from him. It's extortion. Oh, no, 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 no. You're fully conscious. And trust me, we don't have to get you the best. Uh, my, uh, we're, we're happy to set you free and you can take your chances with any kind of gestures down at your arm. That, uh, it, it Please, we're not twisting your arm at all. It's it's per perfectly fine. <laughs> not twisting my arm, you bastard. What the hell do you want? Oh, uh that's that's really or not, not me to you. Say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, this is a what would we call um hmm, 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 hmm. the beginning of a beautiful relationship. You understand? Yes. Um our understanding, and we have contracts to the like that uh, uh, our client would be able to reach out to you and uh, ask for certain favors, all perfectly legal, I assure you. Mm -hmm. Like what it's, kind of favors? It, I really cannot say. Um, we've had people in the past that have had life-changing amounts of money sent their way and they've just had to walk across the street and mail a letter. That's it. That could be all you have to do. Now, of course, uh, Mr. Barnes, I don't want you to get the impression that this is entirely up to chance. You see, we, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to put this. Um, we're very good lawyers. We're very good lawyers. And we understand that a person with your uh, painting proclivities has certain income streams you might not want made public. Am I right? You're a fucking bastard. I'm a lawyer. So do we do we have a deal, Mr. Barnes? Well, just to recap. Mm -hmm. You get me here while I'm defenseless to twist my arm and blackmail me. Saved you doing favors for your client. Not how I who is a madman who kill his family with a shotgun. That seems like libel or slander. I forget which. Oh, I'm not making him any public statements. This okay. Private correspondence. Good. You good. should you should know. I thought you said you were a great lawyer. I'm a great lawyer. I just like to make little jokes here and there. But yeah, I mean, some people could characterize this relationship in such a fashion. Yes. Yes, you are potentially bleeding out in the back of an ambulance, maybe headed towards less than ideal care.
Also, who let this cat in the back of the EMT? <laughs> he is the EMT. Yeah. Oh, I see. Highly, uh, highly trained. I, I see the I see the jacket now. Yes. What do you say, Mr. Barnes? Well, you certainly have a way of backing a fellow into a quarter or leaving him with no choice, eh? I am a lawyer. You are a lawyer. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take that as a yes. How's that sound? Whatever. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, Go ahead and sign. And he's taking out contract forms. And just write here. And rather than hand you a pin... He just lifts up the paper and touches it to one of your bloody fingers. And there we go. Wonderful. We will be talking more with you in the future, uh, Mr. Barnes. I assure you, you will feel right as rain in the morning when you wake up. Up his dose. Up his dose. And you can feel yourself... Drifting away. Morphine cloud. <laughs> yes, yeah. It feels <laughs> it feels nice. All right. We cut back to Agent Dust and Agent Diana. You are in the bathroom atop of stack of books. And you hear a car pull up outside. Ah oh, shit. Oh. I'll quickly move forward to the window and look out. Uh, you recognize the car that you saw at the restaurant. This is very clearly Agent Exeter. He's getting out. It, it looks like he is a white cardboard box that he's unloading from the back of the car. Um, we have we have no time to search. We need to get out of here. Maybe we could stay and watch what he does. We it is dark in here, and he doesn't have electricity. What about that nude woman? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. to worry about. All right, let's go out the back door. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring this stuff with us. Got my toe. Um, make a quick intelligence check for all of us. Both of us. Uh, yeah, the two of you. Yeah, okay. ninety. Okay. Uh, nope, nothing failed. Sixty-five. Okay. So, what are you doing again? We're going to go to the back door and go out. Yeah. Quietly. Yeah. Okay. Then roll. Uh, I want to say luck, but you're trying to do this kind of quickly. So let's do a stealth. I think a stealth makes sense here. Mm, not very Success. stealthy. It's dark. Okay. I probably step, tripped over something. Yeah. Yeah. Agent Diana, Shit. you round the corner away from that. And Agent Dust, there is just something there you maybe you turned off your flashlight you click something scatters into the lawn Fuck. and you hear this who's there show yourself just gonna stand really or, or if i if i've fallen down i'm just going to lay there very quietly uh we'll say he's not quite around the corner yet you think you could still get away, but he probably knows that someone's there. Yeah. Uh... Oh, no. I'll... I'll... Go ahead, so. Go ahead. I, I will quickly uh, get up and uh, sit on the furniture and cross my legs as if I was waiting for him. All right. Diana. So at this point, is that the stoop? Are you just kind of sitting on the stoop? Or are you going inside to wait? Run, somebody has to get away. I'm, I'm going. Uh, <laughs> at least also keep washing away. Um, I'm going to go out. Okay. Uh, yeah. Agent Diana, you're running out. And Agent Dust, you... Watch as Agent Exeter walks towards the back of the building. He's very clearly holding a gun at this point. You can kind of see him past the kitchen window. 
and he gets to the back door and tests it. It's locked. You can see he's moving with keys. Then he opens it and steps inside and sees you. Hello, Agent Exeter. Ah. Do you remember what are you me? doing here? Yes, of course I do. Trying to track you down. Well, it appears you've done so. What do you want? Paid your bills in a while, huh? I want to know more about what you're up to. You mentioned a book. Do you know? What do you want to know about the book? You warned us. You told us not to look into it. Uh, can you give us some, some idea where it is, where we should begin looking? I believe you have the information of where you should start looking. We have a lot mind? of information. And for the moment, there is a a look that kind of passes over his eyes. And he holsters the gun and you can see him reach into a pocket and he pulls out a small tin case and you can see on it very briefly as it pops open there is a clown face on it with the eyes scratched out and he takes something it kind of rattles in there and he just pops it in his mouth and swallows sorry I need them to stay focused you understand sure what you are seeking is the agents you don't need to find the book if you ha if you find the book bring it to me but don't read it Can you tell us what it looks like? I don't. It looks like a lot of things. It's not one book. It's hmm. not one thing. All right. Uh, so what, what have you been working on here? It's all this mechanical stuff. I don't want to talk about the fine let's talk about the lion shall we talk about the what the lion this the lion one. and he walks to the front room he's not really waiting for you okay i'll get up and follow behind him so you know your neighbor is going to come is going to call the police on you with the uh... The negligence of your front yard you should hire somebody to mow your lawn for you i'm busy i have my work to do you want me to hire somebody and send them over it's not important it's okay. really not important because me being here knowing that you're an agent and you know that i'm an agent we're kind of on the same side at least partly but uh, the police don't know anything, and they're just going to do what they do. I would agree. We are on the same side, partly. And he brings you into the front room and walks over to one of these machines. And you guys didn't spend a lot of time in this room, so he's kind of working his way back. And he stops in front of this really peculiar machine that looks like a, a bit like a cylindrical base with many interlocking parts an engine block you're pretty sure for what you could say would be a head right and these thin spidery kind of umbrella um i guess you'd call them legs kind of they're they're just sitting pulled up against it And he walks up to it. Do you understand? This is the lion. The lion is an amazing predator. 
Um, look, I mean, I'm really not against anything you've got. I, I'm all in favor of creation. So, then some I sort don't of think some sort of automaton, something like that. Yes, it appears to me that you want what the book you want the book well i want to find the book to bring it to you i'm a i'm an agent i i know not to look into things if you say not to look into them fine and he again pulls out this little uh this little tin case and pops another something small about kernel sized into his mouth Fine. Get them. Get the book from Sam and Gina's household. Bring me right. the book. Okay. And you're not going to show me what the lion does. You're just you because it would come after me. Well, he kind of touches it hmm yes we'll oh. say that's the case yes okay all right then i don't need to see hmm. thank you for the information and i will and, back out of the house yeah and he's just kind of watching you as you back up closes right. the door behind you And I keep my eyes on the house as I'm sort of walking away and then down the street towards the car. And hopefully, Agent uh, Agent Diana hasn't run off. <laughs> oh, no. If, if anything, I was just keeping, like, watch to make sure that's what All she right. would be doing. So I come and get out and say, get, let's get the hell out of here. He's yep. been making some sort of mechanical machines called one of them the lion so that it can hunt hunt you down okay and yeah as you kind of look back there are two figures in the window one is agent exeter and another is this almost ethereal woman dressed in kind of that like flimsy gauze sort of look there's really not much covered try to look closer does it look like also an automaton? It doesn't. No. Okay. Okay. We we got out of that lucky. We need to get back. He didn't notice that I've got all these things in my in my tote. So. Or maybe as if he wants us to have that. Well, I see how he could predict that we would have grabbed those particular things, but let's just get the hell out of here. It was dark. Yeah. He didn't yeah, have let... any light. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's go. Okay. You speed he away. Said, he said something about Samagina's house. You're talking about the uh, the Marquis of Hell. I I guess we can uh, we can easily get the address from the from the friendly. The Marquis of Hell has a an address. No, I mean, the, is it is she the name of the nurse? Yeah, oh, that's the name of a nurse. Right, that's yeah. right. Samagina's household. So that's actually Dor Dorchester House? Is that what he might mean? I don't know. That's enough. That's enough for one day, Let, one night. Let's uh, let's see how the others are doing. Maybe actually check if Agent Dante is okay. Oh, well, yeah. Let's just drive back. Why can't I get anybody's and nobody's answering? It's as if their phones have been... Uh, changed and switched to another phone <laughs> let's yeah. head back towards headquarters hopefully we're not completely compromised let's hope not then i will say you meet up agent dent you are kind of getting ready at this point they spent some time there they drove but they are back uh you're maybe thinking about getting donley up 
Yeah, I'll shake him awake when it's time to get up for the shift. Conley, a lot has happened. <laughs> so what has been happening? Got a bunch uh, of stuff to look through. Yeah, we think that Everyone Dante's there? phone has been compromised, so we need to swap out the yeah. our burners. I already guys, told the handler. You guys saw that face with the blackness behind it? I told him to get out of there. Well, uh, has anybody, have either one of you gone over to check on him? I was watching Donley. I was on shift. I was asleep. I was 30 minutes away in another... All right, let's 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 go check on him. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting rest for the night. I've been up for two days straight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then um, just get some rest. How about uh, maybe you, Agent Dustin, and Agent Donley check on uh, Dante. I'll just... You can you can just leave me alone. I'll lock the doors, barricade the windows. Well, Donley's had some rest. Neither one of us have had rest. Um, yeah, but you got sleep yesterday. I didn't. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's okay. Uh, I mean, it's it's fine. I'll, you you never know. Especially we can't that, be alone. I mean, Diana, you can stay here with with that. Yeah, yeah that that's that's why I insist. Go and check right. on Dante. And what'd you find at Exeter's house? <laughs> well, we got this whole thing. You can go through it. This is all stuff that we got out of his place. Okay, okay, okay. But, do okay. I see his annotated R's Guisha? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I thought this would interest you, Dent. This uh, this little R's Guisha with lots of notes. But there is a cell phone in there that's got a mark on it uh, of, a, of a demon, Setri. Okay. Uh, so be careful of that. And um, does this, um, does this, Annotated ours, Guisha. Tell me anything new. Uh, you're gonna have to take some time to read it. But right. No, I'm just flipping through it. Just like I'm reading like one annotation. Does it give me new insight? Because if it does, I'm not gonna sleep. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely enough text in there that you're thinking there. There's probably something new in here. Uh, I must stay up. Okay. I also tell you all the stories about the the lion. Well, and. The C cell wanted us to dispatch Exeter and bring him in. Good luck. He might so have now some he's serious got a lion? defenses. He's got I some kind of making, killer robot? He's oh, making yeah. some sort of automata that... Yeah. And he's probably 20, using dark magic to do it. 20 years ago, I saw an automaton at my hotel. Really? Yeah. I've been uh, to Disneyland. I've seen automatons. Uh, not like this. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. There's also one thing. There's he's not alone. Uh, there's a young nude woman with him. Did it look like the person in the photo from the 1800s? Does it really does when you look at them side by side? She's obviously wearing a lot more clothes in the 1800s, but yep. Okay. So just to just to delegate some stuff, we need to swap out the burners, check up on Dante. I've got a lot of reading to do tonight. I'll I'm gonna get I'll, coffee. I'll yeah. just stay here to keep watch, I, I guess, while you're reading that. Okay. So who is going to the hotel? I'm going with uh Donnelly. Um, Dustin Donnelly. If you drive, I I no, just I'll driving. drive. I'm brushing my teeth, <laughs> coming out. So I'll drive. Um, Donnelly, though, your phone, your personal phone starts to ring. Oh, I'm middle of night. I'm not answering that. <laughs> what time is it? Uh, yeah, middle of the night is pretty accurate. It's like it's, 2 a.m. Uh, probably. Yeah, probably about 2 a.m. with, you know, surveillance and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, it rings again. Like you're feeling it buzz in your pocket. I'm assuming you're not the kind of person to have it on. Right. I'll just wait till they, uh, they leave me a voicemail if it's important enough. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's a voicemail like buzz after a couple seconds. Well, yeah. I'll probably listen to it as we're going out to the car. Yep. Uh, you, pop up the voicemail and you're you see it as your uh grandfather 
Fred Carson. And uh, you, you'd hear him on the, the voicemail just... <clears throat> Simon, I I need Simon boy. I need to talk with you. I need to talk with you. It's uh pretty important. Yeah, I'll call. And there's no preamble when he picks up. He's very clearly agitated as you hear him shuffling around. You can hear like slippers hitting. Simon, Simon. I I got a hold of you. I got okay. Got a yeah, hold of you. Two in the Can morning. I, is What's it? Oh my god! I I had the most most terrible dream. Uh, Simon, Simon, and Simon, have you told Fred what you've done? Like what your Delta Green involvement is? No, but uh, not in so many words. I mean, he knows I disappear. Or once in a while, mm-hmm. um, take special cases. Simon, yeah. there. I had a dream. They're coming back. They're coming back. I killed. I killed them. When when was it? Back in fifty five. But I I saw them again. Where the masks? And we shot him down in the middle of the street. But he's back, Simon. Oh. In 55, the mask. What are you talking about? There was, there was a there was a killer. He was just part of something. And we were he, he killed some people. He killed a couple of people. And we chased him down in New York. We chased him down and we shot him in the street. Well, you know, that's in the past. That nothing's gonna happen like that now. You're you're no. fine. I saw him tonight. He was there. It's as real as day. It's just a dream. Simon, he says we have to run. We're not done running, Simon. Just relax. Get some sleep. I'll talk to you tomorrow. He said it was static protocol. I understand. Get some sleep. Okay. Good night, Simon. Run, run fast. I'll run it. Hangs <laughs> up. Now, yep. was was Donnelly listening to this in the car as we're driving? Uh, you would have heard the one side. You would have heard Donnelly's side of the conversation. I think so he's driving like this. Say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would I would have listened to it as we're going to the car. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or well, actually, yeah, no, I would, yeah, I would have called him after I'd listened to the voicemail, and and yeah. So, Donald, I, you is probably everything, heard some is of it. Is everything okay? Sound like your dad was in distress. That's my grandfather. He's not ninety nine. He oh, wow. Well. Yeah. It's two in the morning, um, and in Texas. I don't know what time it is. Is he but... suffering from dementia? I my father went with dementia. It sounds like a wee bit, yeah. Um, that could be pretty rough. Yeah, I think so. So, I guess we got to go find yep. Dante. Uh, yeah, if he was, he was going to go into the other room. That you know, we so. shouldn't have left him there by himself. Because what if, what if the magic window opened and he went through? Oh, you know, he, he went through. If there was an opportunity to go through, he was going through it. Uh, he's really unstable. I mean, you guys have, didn't really warn me how unstable the man is. Dan seems like a pretty good agent. Oh, yeah. He's by the book. Uh, we think of Diana. She's uh, stubborn. No. Oh, That's yeah, probably I like her. Trait. Oh, yeah. But Dante, I, I think he's dangerous. I think he's going to push us into places we don't want to go. Well, let's go check up on it. And you do arrive at the boxer. You know, there's kind of a crowd of people still, maybe a straggler or two smoking and chatting uh, outside, maybe a couple members of the staff. What the hell? 
Oh no! <laughs> Else happened. Uh, I'll go None of this cause here. It says like, has something happened? And you talked to yeah, some guy like practically lost his arm. I don't know where the hell he came from. Lost I think he used arm. to stay stay in here. I I don't know. Some some crazy dude. I, I don't. It's tough to say. He was unconscious. Maybe. So we don't have garbage disposals, but that's about what it looked like. Really? And uh so he's off to the hospital then? Oh yeah, they took him away hours ago. Um uh, we've we've got somebody we're here to see. Can we just go up? Yeah. Free. Yeah, right. of course. Yeah. All right, yeah. up to the sixth floor. Okay. And so when we get there, are there people cleaning the carpets? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, in the hallway, there are a couple people kind of scrubbing away at the carpet. You see someone rubbing at the wall. Is our mysterious door uh, there? It sure is. They but don't seem to be dealing they don't with see it. it. Yeah, correct. Do we the see the blood coming? leading from that door? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Try it. See if it's unlocked. <laughs> and nobody seems to notice us walk inside. Nope, they don't seem to care. And you, if you walk inside, you see you have to get your flashlight out again because it's, uh, again, dark. And you see the piped window that's really in front of a brick wall. And there's no blood or anything there. There is, however, a cardboard box in the middle of the room. The blood comes right up to the door frame, but there's, there's no, no blood, blood in the room. There's no blood in the room. The window is yeah, still closed. I'll around. What's in the oh. cardboard box? Oh, that wasn't there when I was here last. Mm -hmm. Well, he could have brought it in. Is there anything in the cardboard box? Yes. Uh, it's filled with junk. There's foreign papers, old radios, metal leg brace, needles. And at the bottom you're kind of shifting around you see there's uh about a dozen polaroids and agent donnelly i'm going to need you to make a sanity roll as you recognize pictures that you took of abigail's shrine oh, back yeah. in the night all floors these, what are all these pictures of looks like graffiti on the walls oh i passed then zero yeah that's does it mean anything to photos you photos these are the photos i took um Looking at the scraps of stuff, is this residue of glue on it? Stuff like that. Things maybe pulled off the there, wall. Abigail's. It, there isn't. But it you would swear, especially as you're looking at these, that these are the same parts. Just not glued. And as you're comparing, you hear a creak from the bathroom door as the bathroom door shuts. I'm pulling a pistol. I'll pull out my taser. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab, I'll keep those photos and slip them in a pocket, but go to the door. Okay. Opening the door, you see a glimpse of a man carrying the cardboard box in the bathroom. It he must have gotten it like it's very clearly the same box, but it's in his hands now. And, and he not in the room? walks. It's not in the room as he walks into the bathroom wall and disappears. Oh, He's wearing a suit and is you recognize him from some of the pictures you found in this room as the intelligence agent. I'm I'm going to grab a hold of Agent Donnelly's at the back of his jacket and pull him back into the room and say, is this like what you guys were talking about, the night floors? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah. Okay, we um, need to get the fuck out of here and find out what happened to... I, this, I mean, it, it must have been... As we had talked about, it seems like it was... You know, weeks ago we talked about there was a cleaning. Somebody cleaned this room. Yeah, well, fuck it. Let's, let's get out. We'll talk about it outside. There's something really screwed up here. 
Oh yeah, the, the whole place is wrong. Okay. So yeah, we'll start backing out. Um, yeah, and do a uh, do a sanity roll as you do both really kind of clock that this box that you were just looking at is now. Vanished. That was a fail. Rolled another uh, double o. I oh, was double o nine. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, oh, 009? So just it's nine, just right? I just a regular. Okay, yeah, yeah that's fine. A zero on a pass, D four on a failure. Yeah, I'm just sort of pulling him back. Yeah, I'm a little freaked on. Gotta this get one. out. Backing up, and I'm all the while I'm sort of praying internally. Please, door. Please open. Please open door. Please. Yeah. <laughs> and you knock out into the hallway and the hallway is completely empty there is no one cleaning is it clean it's, it's clean it's completely clean check my watch yeah how long we've been in uh you've been in there for quite a while you're thinking that uh dent is probably waking up soon mass general we got to get to mass general that's probably yeah, where they that's... took him and uh, text everybody. Tell them that we were stuck in that room for hours for five minutes. Yeah, what time is it like if we check our... Uh, you get this text, uh, you're about half an hour from sunup, we'll say. So We don't even know if it's the same still. day. That's really scary. Yeah, if anything, at that point, if, if Dent was staying awake, she might just take like a two-hour nap or something, most likely. Yes. And let's say, Dent, you are looking in this, so we'll we'll jump to you before we get back to Dante in just a moment. Let's see how he's doing. You may add a percent to your occult as you are reading through this. And I will summarize, uh, just for those that aren't aware, is that the Ars Goetia is the first book of the, and here's where I kill the word, uh, Lemegatron, Leme, Lemegatron, Lesser Key of Solomon. Let's call it the Lesser Key of Solomon. A grimoire that circulated in the 17th century, penned by someone using the pseudonym King Solomon. The book itself uh, existed in many languages and pieces before it was uh, kind of assembled in the mid 17th century. Before that, it was just scrolls, books, folios all over. And it details 72 demons as well as seals they must pay allegiance to. It lists them by name, and many of these are circled and have notes next to them. And as you dig deeper into this, you find the following notes. Wist notes check out. B is Solomon. One call each except as Modet. Bitru is a friend of V, but but not B, but S. Acadian, the play is still going on somewhere. DRD, middle name, Flores, dash 29 legions, employees. Logic, ethics, and precious stones, recover lost things, makes sense. Person, answers truly of all secret and divine things of earth and the creation of the world, first in Lundine's house. Marbus Goetic, President, 36 Servants, just like MSPFS, B, not M. Overlay Marbus in Bitru equals 4S. Yurizen, the Starry King, and the Gong. There is different handwriting in red pen. V, I invoke the Bornless One. V, that didst create the earth and the heavens. V, that didst create the night and the day. Thee that didst create the darkness and the light, thou art, and for Asor, Asoranaferos, something like that, whom no man has seen at any time. Carve symbol, Priumiton, do not leave the circle. Ritual calling, announce the 72 names, inscribe chosen seal, wait. And that is different than the other handwriting in the book. Oh, boy. And there's no hints to what this will do. No. Might as well do it, right? 
<laughs> All right, yeah, well, that's the spirit. I'll yeah. probably pass out after that. Okay. And then we will cut over to Agent Dante, who is coming to gently in a very well upkept hotel or hotel room, uh, hospital room. You have a private room. There are very nice paintings hung throughout. There are no fewer than three nurses around checking statistics, making notes. You see there are a couple of doctors uh, working on you. And one walks up uh, to you and kind of gives you a little wave. Uh, Mr. Barnes, how are you, how are you feeling? He's got like the, the face mask on. Bleepy, I, I guess. Yeah, and he asks, because yeah, you're, you're sleepy, but there's no pain. And as you look at your arm, it has been covered in this ceramic-like cast it's it seems kind of like uh light it's very light for what it is you mind uh, flexing your fingers there sure all right, all right great 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 yep he's making notes all right well you're gonna need to keep that on for a while uh that's gonna gonna heal you up right quick and uh you should be good to go well uh, how how long do i need to have it on oh tell you what you keep it on until it doesn't feel right anymore Oh, okay. All right. Great. Wonderful. All right. And uh, you go ahead and give Mr. Wild my uh, best regards, right? Uh-huh. All right. It's just, we're, we're, <laughs> we're even, right? And how's your human? You're a reporter, so I'm assuming decent. That's 40%. A 40% is enough in this case. He's scared. Yeah. yeah it's we're we're in the clear uh yeah just uh tell him that if he if he ever needs anything else i just i'm happy 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 to help at any time just you 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 will tell him of, right of, of of course when I, I talk to him i'll tell him good good <laughs> all right um i think we're we're good here um uh don't play any baseball or anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. And you can recover. Let's roll a number there. Uh you only recover a hit point as they are Oh, these leaving. bastards. This is the yeah. best. The best. Uh, oh. Oh, so as, soul for one hit point. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> of well, welcome it to America. Really hurt. <laughs> Which is in its own good, but you do have this strange ceramic thing, and there's the more you look at it, there's articulation in the hands or in the fingers that lets you move them, but it's still covering. Oh, thank you. Do I have my phone? Uh, yeah. Uh, he kind of points to a little side tray. You I can see how long have I been yeah. here? Uh, you've been here all night. It is uh, about the same time as the others are leaving the room right now. I'll call one of their numbers that I remember. All right. Who'd you like to call? Uh, Dust, I suppose. It's like, oh, um, uh, Dante's on the phone. Hold on. Well, it's a random number it's for a, the record. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but somehow it magically reaches <laughs> my phone every time. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Well, he, he knows your burner number, your old one. I don't think you've gotten rid of it yet, have you? I haven't. Yeah, good thing. So if he calls my number, I'm like, oh, he's on the phone. Hold on. Dante, where the fuck are you? Uh, are you at Mass General? We're on our way to Mass General. I, I'm somewhere. Yeah, you're at Mass General. Yeah, I think Mass General. We, we've been to the room. Uh, obviously something happened. There was blood everywhere. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's the vents. Check the vents. Well, we're, on, we're not there anymore. We're halfway to Mass General. We'll be there in a few minutes. Uh, there's been some problems, so uh, we're, we're getting new phones. Problems? Well, you started it with uh, suddenly disappearing, and then we broke into... I'll, I'll tell you when I get there. I don't want to say this over the phone, because, you know, there's people listening. Uh-huh. Right. All you right, sound pretty I'll loopy. See, uh, <laughs> it's called morphine, my friend. Yep. Uh, do you know what room you're in? No. Okay. Uh, do you know what floor you're on? Whatever number you are, it's the equivalent of the penthouse suite. It is uh, a very nice room. What name did he check on? Check in under. Yeah. What's your last name? What, uh, what name Barnes, are you? Barnes. 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 Right. Check I'm going to pretend to be your brother. Okay. Okay. It won't let me in if I'm a relative. All right. Click. So, seeing that I don't have my burner phone, I want to give it a call. All right. It uh, it rings for the moment, and you hear a uh, a voice that you haven't heard in about eight years pick up. Your daughter, Nancy, picks up the phone. Hello? Uh, hi, Nance. Hey, oh, hey, hey, Dad, what's up? Oh, uh, it's just been a while, just wanted to check up, see how you were doing. I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Can we keep it short? I, uh, I have a, um... Uh, a show I'm going to. Oh, a show. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. What What is it? What show? Um, it's a uh, what is it called? And she's very clearly like leaning over to talking to someone. Uh, a song before travel. That sound familiar to me at all? It doesn't. Oh, who who wrote it? Um, oh, uh, it's this, uh, Corelli, I think, Corell, C-O-R-R-E-L-L. Yeah. I'll have to look into it. You know how I appreciate the arts. Yeah, we're here at the uh, Granada Theater in Chicago. Chicago. She says it like that. Yeah, the, the right, show's... You... Yeah, the show's about to start. Yeah, Can you I... you have fun. Okay, yeah, we will. Uh, and you can hear kind of the swelling behind her of music and... Oh, uh, lights are going down. Sorry. Talk to you later, Dad. Bye. Talk to you later. She hangs up. Would you like to roll Sanity? I would love to. And that is a failure. Okay. Roll a d6. Uh-huh. Drop it on the floor. That's a four. Okay. Which is the breaking point. Okay. What does this look like to the other two as uh, Agent Dante calls his dead daughter? Oh, for us? Well, I guess uh, Agent I didn't know Dante. Gotten there yet. Uh, Agent Dante, yeah. Um. So we're walking in, seeing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dante, I'm. Uh, 
Oh, you seem upset. It's the drugs. <laughs> what happened to your arm? Did you break it, your arm? It was. It was a show. She was at a show. We need to go see the show. She was there. She show what? Uh, I, I should have gone now. to the show. She was there. Don't you understand? She was there. God damn it. He's he's loopy. Should I call a nurse? See if he needs something. Calm down. <clears throat> Pretty nice here. Looks like they got yeah, some good there's, drugs. There's a there's a little button. You could just click it. Yeah. Oh how. Just- Bad it starts screaming, Nance. Yeah, I'll hit the button. I should have gone, Nance. I should have gone. Shit. I should be there with you. Am I trying? Am I trying to get up out of the bed? Lay back and rest. No, 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 no. Lay back and rest. Oh, she's there. She's there. I need to go. I'll hold him down as we're hitting the button. Yeah. He's having a bad. I if the nurse comes in, he's having he's he's having a bad reaction to the morphine. Are you trying to break out, Agent Dante? Are you? Is this okay, kind of at some level with you? No, I need to go. Okay, you're gonna hurt your arm. Sorry, I'm gonna hold him down. Yeah, all right, let's do a contested strength. Uh, here, all right. Oh, 47 is a pass. I got a 24. I got 61. That's a fail out of 65 percent. Is mine all right? Agent Dante, you are able to break out. What's what's it look like as you push them to the side? Do you take off running in a hospital gown? What's your plan? Yeah, pretty. Yeah, I'll take off running with like shouting into my phone, even though it's not um, calling anybody. Just yep. I'm coming, Nance. I'm coming. And if I see a vent in the hallway along the floor. Mm-hmm. I'll start trying to like pull it off the wall. Okay. And just start screaming to it. I want to come and see. Take me, please. Yeah, nurse, I'm yelling for a nurse. nurse. I'm coming now. Yeah. yeah. Surely somebody's coming hearing all the. Uh, of, yes, all the there are yeah. nurses now coming down the hall. Oh, no. Oh, he's, no. he's having a bad reaction to the medication, we think. Uh, uh, okay. And they're they're very kind of. Trying to do like that. No, it's not. No, there's nobody in the vent. Orderlies. There's no one in the vent. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Get yeah, him in bed. Let's get someone him. stronger. He's wiry. Damn. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's slippery. Um, no, we need to help. go. I'm just screaming at whoever's yeah. grabbing me. If it's they're, a nurse, yeah, if they're... it's them, I'm just. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll try to hold him down again. I'll try to put up. A... We'll, we'll help to, to get him back in if the orderlies come. Yeah, his family call him the silverfish because he's really slickery and slippery. I'll probably try to put a hold on him, you know, some kind of... I, I'm coming, Nance, I... let me go! I need to go see! Unless you'd like to make a, uh, you know, do a strength Unarmed? check, okay. Dante. Yeah, just, <laughs> just I'm curious if you make it through this vent and you have to get dragged out. 15 is a pass. All right. The vent cracks, and you are... If you're quick enough, you can probably get in there. Can I yeah. try full arm combat? I'll I'll grab him by the ankles <laughs> yeah. and pull him back. Yeah. yeah, sure. Go ahead and do a do an unarmed or a strength or something against yeah. that fifteen. Yeah. Um forty seven. That's a pass. Okay. <laughs> Taser right, him then. in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> no. That's uh more or less what the nurses will do as Donley, you are able to finally grab him. He's made it part way into the vent. And Dante, your hands do close on something. Nance! Yeah, and as they pull you back, you have a blank, featureless mask in your hands. We see this coming out. Yeah. As he pulls. Ah, oh, Jesus. What the hell did he go through? I'll uh, I'll snatch the thing out of his hand. It's like a paper mache mask. It's nothing fancy. Yeah. And over the next couple minutes with uh, Dante struggling, they finally managed to get some sedatives into him. The mask will go into the tote. Okay. 
Oh, what do you think, like, Gus? Should we leave him here for a while? Sedated. Yeah, he's he needs to be sedated. He's just probably in a lot of excruciating crying things. myself to sleep, just saying, "Dance, I'm coming, dance." Whatever just happened wait, to his dance, horn. I'm on my way, please. I'm gonna text um Dan ETA on what phone? <laughs> I guess you told me everything about our switching phones, and if I can't. <laughs> Oh, you can probably text Diana. She's with me. Yeah, yeah Diana is there. Like, you text Diana? Both of you. Yeah. Uh, like 10 minutes, what's up? I'll just text it. <laughs> uh, Dante's crazy. Yeah, he's freaking nuts. Aren't we all? Usually crazy or abnormally crazy? He's screaming and he's in the hospital. He's been okay. injured. He's running around screaming. He's trying to get into the vents. Oh. They finally restrained him. They've strapped him down and they've pumped him full of morphine. All right. Let's just get going. <laughs> I think I'll I'll be driving. Um meet us in the cafeteria. Got it. Damn. Oh, we're on All yeah, right. we tell her Didn't. the floor in. Yeah, that's easily enough. You are able to meet in the cafeteria. We'll say top floor. It's penthouse. The nice one. We have our new phones. (laughs) Hand out. Yep. Thank you. Getting some coffee. I can imagine. Some don't, you know, Danishes, whatever. Um, I'm troubled. I'm troubled by what he pulled out of the damn vent. What? Yeah. What did he pull out? Look is he this. okay? Is he is he good to continue? I I don't know. Yeah, I'm, we'll see. Then leave him here. We're wasting time. He pulled this out of the vent. I'll show him the mask. I'll I'll share the notes that I found. Yeah, I researched Weird. from the annotated copy. Are we getting what was? Uh, what does all that mean? Do you have any idea? Yeah. Well, the last uh, the the red pen some kind of ritual I haven't made uh, heads or tails of what it actually does but it's a ritual it's not the same different handwriting than uh, the handwriting in black so we can I mean we can summon a one of these demons no we shouldn't do that no I'm just saying we could summon I mean no this is different than the one that yeah the, we the summoning ritual we used uh, 20 years ago the uh, the other one required blood and a sword. This one is just this one's much simpler. Yeah. Um, I don't want to give the wrong impression with that. It does still have the traditional Ars Goetia. That's more like a a crib notes of how to do it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, all, right. all right. So it's not because it was it was yeah. read the same for the first for a right. bit. Right. Oh, so it is the same exact ritual. Um. It looks like the uh the particular like chant is truncated. Yeah. Beyond that, yeah, it, it looks like notes from that. Okay. So you've done oh. one of these rituals oh. before. I don't like to talk about it. Yeah. We have to do what we gotta do. I don't like to listen to it, but Well, I'm, I'm we're not there at we're not ready for anything like that. Okay, so <laughs> we we what? got to the we got to the, the hotel. And they were cleaning up. Uh, there was blood everywhere. We walked into the room, and we were literally there for five minutes. And we freaked out and left the room, and it was morning. So hours went by while we were in that room. Oh. Uh, only minutes for us. And there was a bunch of pictures which Don Lee took. Weird. I'm going to reach in my pocket and see if they're still there. Yeah, if you had kept any of them, they are still where, there. Where does this get us, right? Yeah. This doesn't like, get us... I don't know we don't, where. we don't have a lot of leads, and I think tonight they'll finally be able to understand me. Are we, are we still looking for this book that Exeter wants? To oh, look for? didn't you look. say that the nurse had it? Yeah, a well, search. That's, that's where we find it. But he also said that it's not a book. 
It's not a thing. It's not it's, one thing. It's it, it's multiple things, but he wouldn't say what. Okay, it so was. That, that's we not raid this nurse's house while she's away at work, and then we burn this thing. Get rid of it. Don't even give it to Exeter. Say call Exeter with the seer phone or whatever. Say we have the book, and then tase the fuck out of him, and then get him to C cell. Like the plan. Well, yeah. That sounds like a plan, and we should, we should be able to function in uh, in sync or in harmony with one another. Yeah, I think we just we all need to check out Nurse uh, Samagina's place, unless yeah. anyone else has any other leads. Uh, maybe someone should watch Dante, or if Dante is able to recuperate quickly. Yeah, how like. How you describe his us. behavior? Sounds like he's he's off the rocker. Maybe have him at bed in Dorchester House. Well, he's one of the best hospitals in the in the state, and uh, looking around, he's he well cared for. He's in a nice nice part of this the building. So, do you think that's a coincidence that he's just well cared for in the best hospital uh, in the United States? I don't honestly know. know how he could afford. That. How do you think he can afford that? I don't know. What exactly I'm happened? Maybe the host put him dead. up. I'm just um, eyeing dead for a minute. <laughs> well, he gave us his name. Or a name. What, what was name? what what was the name? Did he give us did he give you a name? Who? Yeah, he, he checked in under his Oh his, his really name. He gave us the name Barnes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a I mean we could do a, a background check on him. If sure. that's his real name, but I don't think that's important. That's we're, you're all you're all uh, agents of Delta Green. You should be. I mean, here's the thing: we can just leave him right now and then cut contact with him forever because we don't give him a new burner phone, and that's it. Well, what condition was he found in? Like uh... Uh, something he, happened to his was, arm. He had a cast. We tried to hold him down. He he flipped out. We walked in. He was flipping out. He was on the phone. He, Saying something about Nancy. He jumped up. He took off. He pushed us out of the way and then climbed into a vent. All right. I want all of your opinions. Is he a liability? I think so from the very beginning. I think so, too. Okay. Then we, we got to leave him. I don't say not necessarily. We might still need him. I mean, he took the risk of going into the vent. Maybe he can do it again for us. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I no. He can't I, I even. Too much of a loose cannon on this. Get one. out of bed right now. He's knocked out. For now, let's just let's just give him like a day or two to rest and see what. We how don't he have is. that much time. Well, I mean, if he's he'll still be able there... to understand me very soon. Mm -hmm. You keep saying rather cryptic things. What What are you talking about? That's only that's only the information I've been given. Give oh, yeah, by uh, Gardley Grant. A crazy woman in the bar. She said in three days, they'll finally be able to understand me. Exactly. I'm not looking forward to that. I think we've got a plan. I like it. I like, we'll get to Sam and Um, She didn't seem to react to any, you know, when I talked to her, she seemed straightforward she's not the most pleasant person but she never gave me any any indication that she was one of the, these besides the names you guys gotta understand something too that exeter told me that i i i think that i got out without you know him killing us i don't know we didn't expect to get caught but the thing is is that if he knew where the book was all this time, why would he tell us and not get it himself? Because he wants us to be compromised. He wants us to bring it to him for some reason. But we're going to destroy it instead. Yeah. Well, you know, I've already got a reputation for doing that. So I have right. no problem with getting rid of this shit. I'm just nervous about this automaton that he has, the, this lion. This, this killing machine that he just well, well, Marbis, we'll to, we'll Marbis represents a lion. We'll have to intercept him not at his house. 
Well, we'll just he's burn his house down. There's so much motor oil there. If, I've if got no problem comes, with that either. If he comes to his house, he also must leave his house. Exactly. So you could follow him when he leaves and see where he goes. Yeah, he only arrives at the house at night. And he leaves probably in the morning. But then okay, what about- so we should split up then. One person sabotage. Uh, two people, or... I don't know. One group sabotage Exeter's house, and the other group finds whatever needs to be found at uh, Samagina's. Well, you have the perfect you have the perfect alibi if you go to his house. You can mow his lawn. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, that lady. They were happy, uh, and you could go inside and sleep around some more. We did, we didn't get very far. We didn't get upstairs or downstairs. Yeah, um, because he was he just came in at he came right then. All right. How about how about Don Lee and I? We go out and head over to San Magina's, try to find the whatever's hidden. You can go back to Exeter's because you've already established we've been seen there. Yeah, but we've been seen. So as yeah, uh, we... a what a nephew. Yeah, he, he said like well, that. He is our uncle. So mow your mow your uncle's lawn. Come on. Exactly. He has a point there. He's more worried about the the. The woman, like, should that's the one we have to be worried about? I mean, I'll I'll do that if you want, but I'm I hate to say it, but I still don't understand what the fuck is going on here. I'd kind of like to see. I got the Samagina thing, so I'd kind of like to go to the Samagina house. Okay, then who wants to go with who? Doesn't matter as long as it's done. Well. Dent, you seem to have a lot of knowledge about the occult. How about you and I go to Samagina? Okay. And Donnelly and, and Diana, Diana we're off back. to Exeter's. Um, Maybe send sure. some flowers to uh, Dante. And we need to make a choice right now. We either leave a burner in Agent Dante's pocket, or we don't. Well, I say no, but I say keep him in the loop because if he if he's going off the deep end, we need to keep track of where he is. Okay. He becomes the next problem. Yeah, at least to doesn't have to be our problem. Against my better judgment, I will put a burner phone with all our numbers programmed in. Slip that into his pocket. He could blab. Mm -hmm. He could he could start talking to lawyers and things. He doesn't know anything. I don't know. He's not going to compromise me. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll put it in his pocket. He's probably sound asleep. Yes, in a drug induced. uh, Yes, he's he's quite under. There you go, you son of a bitch. I'm going to look at his phone though. His 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 personal phone. Okay. And. uh, Grab some numbers, especially the last one that he he was talking to. Uh, right, yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks it is a number you recognize. It looks like he called his uh uh the burner phone that he used to have, and then you do see some uh text to Hilda Barnes. I think it's probably the other name. All right, he called it burner. One called thing burner. I will not do though is program in. C cell's number into his phone. Yeah. yeah. So it's just us. Okay. Excellent. So it sounds like we have two teams heading out from here. So let's see. Who's going where? Just what did we end up on? Dent and I so, are going to Samagina's. Nurse Samagina's. We're going to Exeter. Yeah, and at least. Then check the, the upstairs and the downstairs. Okay. Last resort, burn it down. And my last question is, who's actually gotten any sleep in the last couple days? Because I'm looking at Dent, and I'm thinking there's not been a lot. Okay. Nope. I will I'll take uh, what the the minus I... twenty penalty to yes. everything. Minus twenty. <laughs> I'll oh. I'll drive for Dent. Take a nap Probably in the car. Idea. And Diana, you got a couple hours? Is that yeah, a- at least if it's roll like I con. think she'll be asleep. Yeah, roll a roll a contest. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Uh 
Alrighty, here we go. Am I rolling con or no? Uh, no, you're. Okay. you're oh, far I'm back. beyond yeah. beyond that point. If it's, uh, <laughs> you're beyond it. I land on at seventy five, seventy five. Is okay, that then you're okay? good? Oh, yeah, okay. That's okay. great. That's well, as that's... best as you could do without a critical. Yeah, okay. lucky. All right. Well, we Can have I offset the... this with coffee. I really don't think coffee. coffee's enough to do it. <laughs> mm, okay. It is really good coffee, but you need a little bit of something extra. <laughs> like, like cocaine. Like cocaine. <laughs> like cocaine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I know we got the location of a green box with uh, some amphetamines. Yes. A bump, sir. Uh, <laughs> see, that, see that guy on the street oh, yeah. corner? I bet you should get yeah. some meth from him. I am not taking meth. Jesus. <laughs> Keep you up. All right. So these two groups leave and we're left in this hospital room with Agent Dante. And we kind of watch this sleeping form there. And Agent Dante, you wake up in a mint green room. There is a small bed next to you a clock ticks on the wall but it seems to be ticking midnight again and again there's a rather basic flat wooden door to the room with a window in it that you can see and a a small grated window to the outside you would recognize this as one of the rooms you saw in the dorchester house Oh. Uh, I'll get up. Is my arm still in a cast? Uh, your arm shows scars. You can see in the past where you were hurt, but it is healed and not terribly well. You've got like the, the various whirls and sort of things where you can see the skin is still bumped and raised and there is uh, a little bit of like still liquid coming out of it you can kind of dab it off but it, it's healed ish I'm just alone in this room you are alone it doesn't appear to be much else of particular interest in this room how am I dressed uh, you look down, you are dressed in the blue outfit of a patient of Dorchester House. No phone, nothing? Nope, you're padding. You don't have anything. I go, I stand up, I'll go to the door, it's locked. It is not, it is in fact open a crack. I'll open it. Okay. You look down the hallway left and right it appears to be nighttime here and there are other patients wandering around these hallways and one of them breaks off and does a fast shuffle towards you and kind of grabs you by the shoulders you gotta get me out of here man and you recognize the face of michael whitworth I'm still here. I'm still here. You have to get me out. Of course. Of course, Michael. I don't want you to overstay your welcome. I'm supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. Are any of us supposed to be anywhere? Uh, yeah. Um, and he looks down the hallway, and there is someone walking. This small man, maybe a little over, you know, four foot five, somewhere in there, like very short goatee. And he is, there's this massive man behind him with this cord bat that is walking down the hall menacingly towards Michael. 
I can't go into the cotton candy room another time. Please. Please. I'm, I'm sorry, my friend. There's nothing I can do for you. No, you have to. They said you could get out. They said you could all get out. You have to talk to Bale. You have to talk to Bale! And as he's kind of shouting this at you, a meaty hand grabs his shoulder and starts to drag him away from you. Uh, the small man with the goatee, is he still there? He is. He kind of just watches this man pick up Whitworth almost off the floor as he's dragging him backwards. And he, he doesn't seem to be paying you a lot of attention. Mr. Wild? He turns to you. Ah, no. Not at all. I'm Dr. Friend. And I... I'm very glad to make your acquaintance. And he's reaching out his hand as you wake up in the hospital bed. <laughs> and that's where we will leave it for the day. Oh, you're muted. Our players included Morgan Llewellyn, Alex Sun, Nell Hippel, Thomas Grooms, and myself with Nathan Decker as the handler. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Delta Green role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.